Hey guys, how's it going? It's Haley of Mothshot Cosplay, and I'm sorry that I've been away for a little bit. I really don't know. It's just been a little wonky lately. If you are looking for a lot more consistent sort of postings of videos and stuff, then I do recommend checking out my Patreon. I think it's like $5 and you get extra vlogs every week, and I'm very consistent with posting those up and everything, and like... If that's what you're looking for, then that's there, that exists. And if you're not looking for that, then that's okay. Like, I try once a week to get here and sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. So let's go ahead and start off with uh, a build I don't even know if was mentioned at all, which is my Crusader level 45 gear from Diablo 3. We are going to BlizzCon this year and Justin and I decided we wanted to do some Crusader stuff. He sat me down, we played some Diablo 3 together and I picked out a set for myself and a set for him and set to work. And this was a ridiculous process. I'm just gonna kind of grab a couple of pieces that highlight some of the different techniques that I use and just talk about them versus going through every single piece of the armor because there's quite a bit. So saying that, we're gonna go ahead and start with these thigh pieces and something that's like predominant throughout this entire armor, you'll see it on a lot of different pieces. These like scale feather boys, I keep going back and forth as to what to call them, but they're all over the place and I knew when I saw them just how I wanted to do them, which is they're all one millimeter craft foam and then for this ridge I literally took a line of hot glue, glued it down the center and just boop, folded it in half along that. And then once the glue cooled and I opened it back up, I had a really prominent ridge. And I actually took that idea from Alice and Tabitha, who used hot glue and folding over a foam on her Talon Widowmaker costume, as well as like a bunch of others. It's really, really cool the things that she does with the tools and the resources that she has. This took a ridiculous amount of time. I would then use contact cement, obviously, to adhere the foam to the other pieces of foam. And definitely happy with the way this turned out, though. I, I would totally recommend this. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and back up a step and say before even doing that, pretty much all of the armor in this build is done with a base layer of one millimeter EVA foam. And it's literally, I just went to AC Moore and I picked up like a pack of that fun, colorful, like the kids craft foam, the one millimeter kids craft foam. And I cut the basic shapes for the thighs, the shins and the gauntlets and the hip pieces out of it. And then would go and draw on the additional details onto my original pattern piece and sketch out like where the feathers needed to be and the size and the scale of the feathers before gluing the feathers down and I really really wanted a thin foam because I'm a really really petite person and if I use really bulky foam it can make me look even tinier than I am so I, I like to make sure everything's in proportion and using a smaller foam for me is a really good idea. The thickness of the foam, even just right where these ridges are, where it's the one millimeter plus one millimeter with the ridge, is probably about four millimeters thick. And then when you get up to like this top part, I do have to go ahead and paint the edges, but that's a later thing. Like these top parts right here, I mean, that's one millimeter foam plus another one layer of one millimeter foam in some spots, paired with four millimeter foam, which is the silver, with another piece of one millimeter on top and then rivets, like it adds up. And if I use four millimeter for the base, I would have looked ridiculous and bulky and not have been functionable. Speaking of the rivets, can you hear them? They're googly eyes again. Googly eyes are wonderful, cheap little rivets. They're just A plus. Um, I actually went ahead and I glued them all on before plasti dipping. And the gold paint on these rivets is actually from a gold paint pen. And then speaking of gold paint, there are a lot of pieces that are just plain gold, like this belt. There's something really cool that I learned, and I feel like it might be common sense to basically everybody except for me, which is that metallic paints, as I know, and I'm sure some of you guys know, are incredibly thin. It takes a ridiculous amount of coats of acrylic metallic paint to cover anything and make it opaque. So what I took to with this build was actually laying down a matte sort of yellowy orange color and then going over that with metallic paint. So I did like two layers of the matte orangey yellow and then three layers, actually I think it was only two of the gold versus what I usually do, which is just right on the plastic dip, 10 layers of gold. It was a definite time saver and I'm gonna be bringing that into like basically every other project that I do that works with gold. Something that I really did kind of struggle with a bit with this project were the pauldrons. I don't know why, they have like a really, really simple shape but getting the shape to be exactly the way that the size and everything that I wanted it, I just, I struggled with it. And I feel like it's in part because when things are so simple, sometimes I like to overthink them. But also, 
this guy sticks out quite a bit because I had to account for the mouth and chin guard that's on the breastplate. And just trying to get all the proportions right on these were, were just weird and difficult and brief discussion regarding these. As you can probably tell, it's two different pieces. So there's like the base pauldron and then there's the top pauldron, kind of similar to what some of my Death Knight pauldrons look like. Basically made them individually, worked with them individually, and then glued them together before applying plastic dip and getting to paint. I almost wish that I had waited to put them together until after I had painted both of the pieces because there are some spots that like, there's white under there that I couldn't really reach with the silver. And I mean, no one's really gonna get up and be like, Ew, there's white, but I'll know. And then these guys, one, two, three, and four, were actually uh, sculpted, molded, and cast because I just like to be ridiculous and extra. The real reason is that I knew it would be quicker to go ahead and take the time to mold and cast these than it would be to either sculpt them all individually or make them all out of foam. So I did struggle a little bit with getting them to stay glued onto the foam. What I ended up having to do was score the bottom of the resin pieces with sandpaper and then apply super glue and like hold them there for a minute each. Pain in the butt, but I mean, it happens. Life moves on and they look pretty good. Uh, and then they also do need to be heat shaped the tiniest bit to be a little bit more round. That is the really, really nice thing about Plasti Dip. As you guys probably know, I assume if you're following me that you're following Kamui Cosplay, who is a, she's like my idol. Plasti Dip can be heated up and shaped even after it's been painted and everything. And speaking of things being heat shaped really quick while I'm on this topic, I discovered that Flexmon does not heat up very well. I know Kamui talks a little bit about it heating up and being able to reshape it. With my experience, I found out that no, it doesn't like that at all. In fact, these bubbles, I don't know if you saw them earlier, were from Flex Bond. I covered this piece in some Flex Bond and it bubbled really, really bad when I tried to heat shape it to be a bit more flat. And I kind of want to just remake this little tiny piece entirely and yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that, that really, really sucks. It's basically a waste of my time. But back to the pauldrons. I'm sorry, I'm like all over the place. Uh, I mentioned that the neck guard will get in the way and that's actually one of my favorite parts about this costume is the neck guard. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the front part of the breastplate really quick so I can show it off to you. So obviously, like I don't have the back piece on, it's just the front, but this is the breastplate. And I think this might even be like the best painted piece out of the entire armor set. I don't know why, I just think it looks really freaking dope and super cool. So this was done, of course, in the usual way, which is grabbing myself in plastic wrap and painter's tape and drawing it out and cutting it. And this is actually the second rendition of this breastplate. And originally my idea was to have it as two separate pieces with seams right here and here, and then have the back part attached directly to the back part of the breastplate. Um, I was just finding that was incredibly hard to pattern out and figure out because it's a, a weird shape. It just, it, it is. I don't, there's, it's hard to get that to stay exactly where it needs to. I decided to say F it and just make it all part of the front piece and I still have so much room in terms of packing. Like, I, there's just, I think that was really the best move that I could have done. Oh, there's also a piece of Velcro right up here because this guy is separate from the back piece to help make sure that it stays exactly where I want it. I do have some Velcro here that attaches to Velcro that's in a slit in the back of the back piece. It's just holds everything together. All right, so one last thing about this armor and then I'm like, donezo for this video because I feel like I've been talking, oh yeah, I've been talking for 17 minutes and that's ridiculous. One of the reasons that I actually picked this armor, sorry, let me just get myself ready for this, is the helmet. It's so funny and Justin gives me so much crap for it. When I saw the helmet in game, I put it on my character and I was like, this is the most hideous thing I've ever put on any character that I've ever made in the history of me playing video games ever. And then like half an hour later, when I finally got a helmet upgrade, I was really sad. I was like, okay, but the other helmet really grew on me. And at that actually, that interaction right there is what prompted me to go ahead and choose this armor to make. And it's definitely like still one of the ugliest things I've ever made. It's awful, it's so bad. But let me put it on for you and you'll see my stupid smile, I'm sure even while it's on my head. Hi, I'm Haley and I look fucking ridiculous. Look at this, look at this stupid, stupid thing. Oh my gosh, it's like ridiculous and stupid.
If you're wondering why everything's kind of wobbling, it's because nothing is actually permanently attached. I need to get some Chicago screws and some other things to finish that guy up. But let me go ahead and show you with the breastplate so you can kind of see that I, I, I don't look quite as ridiculous as you might initially think. And then with the pauldron, like everything just looks, see, it looks a bit better. Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so yes. Oh my goodness. I've been rambling on for 20 minutes now, so I think it's time for me to uh, go ahead and get off of video and go run some errands and finish up some work tonight. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and dealing with all of my inconsistency and my bullshit and everything else that comes with um, following me on Instagram and the memes and the I will be back next week. I'm going to be more consistent. I really don't know why I haven't been consistent. It's There's no excuse. It's just me being lazy and that's not okay not okay. So I will see you guys next week. And if I don't see you next week, maybe I will see you at a convention like BlizzCon. Massive shout out to all my patrons, but an especially big shout out to Gage the Necromancer, Robin Matthews, Nicole Wilson, CJ Rose Cosplay, Joshua Cripps, and things shall get loud now. <laughs>